Hello, I'm Brian Johnson from Revolution Taxon Resupply and Masterpiece Archery Targets. What you're about to see is going to change the way that you view deer. What we're going to do is we have a deer that is, that is dead and we're going to dissect the deer and we're going to actually re-inflate the deflated lungs. We're going to do an anatomy study dealing with the ribs, the kidney, the liver, the lungs, the heart, the scapula, the humerus, the different parts that are all relevant to the hunter. And again, like all shows, if we have to give a warning, a warning to those that are squeamish from seeing blood, this is not the video you want to see. If you're an avid hunter and you want to understand the killer buck, the shooting systems that I've invented, you will, by watching this, it will help you understand perfect anatomy based upon a real deer because I study the deer from the inside out and from the outside in, from live deer, from dead deer, in this video is going to be extremely informative for you. I think you'll really enjoy it. So it's going to be long. We go through a process here where we, where we skin the deer from the outside of the skin. We take the meat away from the ribs. We blow the lungs up. We cut the ribs away from the lungs. We take one lung out. We take the heart out. We show the mediastinum. We show all the different parts there. And the more knowledge you have as a hunter, the more it can help you to be successful of making the perfect shot. And that's what I'm all about, is making the pinpoint perfect shot. And all my systems are based upon perfect anatomy. If I don't understand perfect anatomy, I can't design pinpoint perfect shots. So uh, I hope you enjoy this. Okay, what we did is we skinned the deer so we take a look at the section that we shoot at. We took the front of the neck away. We took from the rib cage here back away. I left the fur intact on the top and on the bottom. So this gives you an idea of when you see a deer alive and you see the fur, this helps tell you how far it is before you actually hit the backbone and the meat. Conversely, on the bottom, how far the fur hanging down coming up to where you actually get the outside of the meat here. So let's start taking a look at some of the anatomical features here. We'll start here with what we call his elbow. Now, you can see the elbow is below the sternum. Now, the weight is off him. And from me studying live deer, when the weight is on the deer's legs, this gets pushed up to about level with the bottom of the sternum. So that would come up about half an inch to there. And if the leg goes back, this pivots, and this will actually come up on the side of the deer. But for the most part, the ochronin on a white-tailed deer does not affect a heart shot that's low. On an antelope, the elbow is up, or which is called the ochronin, is up higher in that can affect a heart shot. Okay, now, if you take a look at this white right here, and I'm going to cut this tissue because we're going to be cutting this as we go. This is a tendon here. And a tendon, as you probably know, attaches meat to bone, where a ligament attaches bone to bone. This protrusion right here is called the external tuberosity of the humerus. The humerus bone goes from the ochronin all right through here. And we're going to open this up where you can see this. It attaches here at this joint to the scapula or the shoulder blade. This rib that you can actually hear, that's called the spine of the scapula. Now if you take a look, basically from the back of the scapula, going straight down a little degree angle forward is where the ochron is. So when you see a deer alive standing there, you can go directly up from the back of the leg because remember, you're going to see fur out there. So if you take in from that fur a little bit or an early season deer where they don't have much and you come straight up, that's where the back of the shoulder blade, and I'm going to open all this up to show you, is. The magic triangle is from the inside of that bone of the humerus and then going up to the scapula. Okay, and this is his bicep muscle. Now, one thing I want to point out here is if you take a look at this artery that's right here. Do you see how this comes down the front leg? When the deer is alive, I fold that skin over. I can actually squeeze this, and I can actually touch the skin together. That, on a live deer, many times will actually protrude out about a quarter of an inch. So it's just like a flap of skin there. Now, the reason I'm pointing this out is I actually shot a deer one time with my muzzy broadhead. This was years ago. I hit him right in the shoulder, right about here. Boom. It was just a flesh wound. Well, as a, as a hunter, I have to follow up my shot. There was not much blood. I knew I hit him on the outside, so there was no internal bleeding. Everything would be on the outside. Come back the next day, find his bed. Okay, we found a bed. The deer's not in it. He lived. Let's go home. But we just searched a little bit more, and we found a blood clot. 
from the blood clot, and the blood clot was the size of my hand. It was close to the size of a small orange. We went a little bit farther, and there was the dead deer. So I can't explain the amount of blood that was on the ground was not enough to kill the deer. So whether or not that caused from that blood clot a stroke, a heart attack, I don't know. But I literally hit nothing more than this vein right here with one blade and cut it. And I ended up with a two and a half year old buck that I killed. So, okay. Now what I'm going to do before we open him up, I'm going to flip him on his back and I'm going to show you his diaphragm. Okay. Now, if you go in the back here, if you take a look at this here, this is the last rib. A deer has 13 ribs, okay? And I'm gonna fold this nice and tight, and you're gonna see the shape of how this comes down. Right here is the sternum, okay? The sternum is the farthest back of where the bone is. That's all bone there in cartilage, that's cartilage. And then you see the stomach. On live deer, you'll see sometimes the stomach hangs down. Some deer, you'll see the stomach actually goes up. The diaphragm is a muscle, it's a membrane, which is attached to the inside of the rib. Inside the diaphragm which is called the thorax cavity. In other words, inside the rib cage is, is the thoracic cavity. Inside the thoracic cavity sits the heart and the lungs, and all the major blood vessels that go to the heart go through the lungs, and they go forward to the head and legs, and they go back to the rear end of the body. So and this is the area that's where our vital organ group sits. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to lift the deer up, and we're going to actually look at the diaphragm and the liver, because the liver, the liver actually sits on the outside of the diaphragm. But what you'll see here when I do this is... I've got this little tissue here to absorb, absorb blood. Okay, the liver sets totally on the right-hand side of the deer. This all here, and I know on videotape it's hard to see this, all this tissue here, that's all the diaphragm. The lungs are deflated, but I want you to see how this is concave. See how this looks like if you took a volleyball, it would set all the way in there. The liver sets up along the backbone, totally on the right-hand side, going down just about to center, and depending on the size of the liver, it attaches to the top, and some livers go all the way down to the bottom. This deer here has an average to, I would say, a smaller size liver from what I've observed, so you can see there's a gap from the bottom here to where the liver does not go all the way down to the sternum. Okay, the back of the liver has a lobe here, which is called the caudate liver lobe, and as that sets up here in the back, that sets back against the kidney. Now the kidney I actually cut when I gutted this because gutting a deer by leaving the liver in, it's very easy to hit the guts when you do that. And it's not a pleasant experience. So I cut very close to where the esophagus comes through the liver part and into the first ruminant uh, compartment of the stomach. So, okay, now can you see that? And again, the lungs are not inflated, so this is not totally accurate, but I want you to see how the how that comes forward to a point right here where everything is attached. The liver is actually attached to the diaphragm. Okay, see right there, that color right there? That's a membrane. Like To me, it's like a tendon that actually is attached there. It's, to me, I'm a Christian. I believe there's a God in how that could be designed, where that could be attached, this membrane to hold that organ, where everything goes through it is just hard to imagine. Right there is a major blood vessel. If you see the size of this, when I cut this deer, when I open, I hit that major blood vessel. Blood poured all over the place. This is why when you shoot an animal, say in the stomach, or you make a rear shot, sometimes they only go a little ways, they die right away. Other times they can live for over 24 hours. It all depends how lucky you are, whether you end up hitting a major blood vessel. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna slowly open this cavity up and I'm gonna cut in the front of the humerus bone here in the scapula, start taking the meat off the ribs and up to the back so you can start seeing what the ribs look like underneath this. And I'm gonna cut this from the spine of the scapula to begin with backwards. And this will take a little while, so we'll do a little fast forwarding of the video because I'm told people get bored and they don't want to watch all this. Okay, and I'm doing this kind of upside down, trying to follow. Well, this is the deltoid muscle that sits over. This is the bicep. There's a deltoid muscle that sits down in this groove, this triangular muscle right here. This juncture right in here, 
these muscles, when I sculpture as a taxidermy supply company, I have spent a tremendous amount of time in this area to get all these muscles right on the money. Okay, there you can see this tendon that you see that's pronounced going up the back of, a, of the deer's leg when you study the live deer. Okay, look at the size of that massive tendon there. Look at that. And that's the one that's attaching this meat here on the shoulder to right here the external tuberosity of the humerus and the back of the scapula. Now as we're going, you'll start seeing, now this top part of the scapula here, that there's cartilage. If you go through this part with your bow, there's not a problem, there's, there's, not, there's not much to it. If you hit the rib here, your arrow's not going through it, or if you hit this rib of this here, the, f the back part of the scapula, your arrow's not gonna go through it. Obviously some big bows it will. This area here, see this? It does not take, I mean, I can take two fingers and I can go through that area. I hit this with a broadhead, and this just brings into con some consideration. If you use a big broadhead, a big expandable broadhead, and you don't have a powerful bow, and you hit some of these major bones, it will actually stop your penetration. So that's just something for you to consider. I'm not recommending a certain broadhead, so... off in the back of the opening. We're going to cut that muscle all the way off up through here down to the rib cage. Now this will show you. Now what I want to show you is do you see how much muscle is how that thickness is before we get into the rib cage where the lungs are at. See I'm bringing this all the way down here. See here's the rib. Do you see how thick that this is? When we do our other videos when we show about arrow placement You'll see people that take a far angle shot, angle back shot, they hit right here, they hit what would be considered the perfect shot right here, but the arrow is like this, and you can see with this thickness, the arrow, plus add fur to it. So you hit out here, your arrow's angling forward, you're gonna go through, you'll probably stop by hitting this here, or you uh, the humerus, or you may get under, under beneath it, but you'll still be on the outside of the rib cage, which means you will not hit a lung. That's why if you can follow this through and watch this, it'll be a very good lesson for you if you are a serious hunter. And again, I want you to see, see the major blood vessel right there? Well, if you hit that major blood vessel on the outside right there with your broadhead, boom, that deer is gonna die quicker than if you hit there. So now I'll show you something else. These blood vessels are quite elastic so if you, they're like a rubber band. I feel they're kind of like a hollow rubber band. You know, if you have a sharp broadhead, you can hit that and you're gonna cut it and the animal will bleed. If you have a dull broadhead, say the backside of this knife, see what happens? You'll hit it and it'll actually, as a rubber band, it'll push out of the way. Because so there's a dull broadhead, there's a sharp broadhead. And see the difference? So it's very, very important to have sharp broadheads. Fortunately, most broadheads nowadays are very sharp, okay? Okay, by taking that away, then we're gonna throw this over here. Okay, now you start to see the distance of this meat, and again, what I was talking about as far as, as, far as your arrow from a quartering away shot, you figure the fur on the deer could be out to here, so if you aim behind the front leg at a quartering away shot and you hit that spot, and you wonder why your arrow doesn't go in, that's all where this bone is. So we're going to go over here. Kind of doing this a little backwards. Trying to expose the front part of the humerus all the way along the edge of the scapula here, okay? The reason for that is I want you to be able to see here what I call my magic triangle, which is from the ocranin to the juncture of the scapula, the shoulder blade, and the humerus. See how this forms like a rounded U-shaped triangle, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back and I'm gonna start cutting off the meat from the ribs.
trying to peel that away as quickly as I can, but as clean as I can, so you can start seeing how much meat, tissue, is on top the rib cage. So we're starting to slowly expose the whole rib cage. These last ribs here, they actually float, and I believe it's the last three, they're attached together basically by cartilage and membrane down here. They're not attached directly to the sternum. So, and the reason I believe is God created them so they float, so they move, because when a deer's lungs expand, it's done, as I understand, by two reasons. One, the diaphragm is it sucks air in, pulls the air in, causes it to inflate. And number two, these muscles on the rib, they actually pull the ribs out to be able to pull lungs in. These, by the way, these superficial muscles right here, these I'm told, it just amazes me how they know this. These are the muscles right here that a deer uses when they have flies on them in the summertime. And they're being bothered because we raise deer and they're, I always wonder, are they more bothered by the cold weather in the wintertime or by mosquitoes and flies in the summer? And I honestly think they'd rather, as long as they have food, they'd rather take the cold weather. But this muscle here twitches to kick the flies off. Isn't that amazing? Amazes me. Of course, everything that God does amazes me. Okay, I'm going to peel that back now. We're coming up here. Do you see how that opens up without me even skinning it? It just opens up on its own right there. Well, this is going to be what you know as a hunter. I'll cut this separate. This is where the back line will start. Okay, and there, this is the cartilage on top of the backbone. Okay, now right there, kind of like filleting a fish, you will see it's completely separate. All this rib meat actually sets right over with that very thin piece of meat, which is a sculpture. I sculpture this piece on right here that comes down, because sometimes in the deer you'll notice it. The lowest part on the back of a deer, when it descends down and comes back up, is right here. And as a sculptor, I study things exactly what's the highest, what's the lowest, what's the farthest in, what's the farthest out. Okay, so now I'm going to cut that off. So you can separate scene. Here's where the back line is, and it's an actual separate muscle that covers the ribs. Okay, now we're going to, and you're familiar with this, those of you that have shot a lot of deer, this is the back line. And you take the back line out in the exact same way you would fillet a fish. And it, it just about falls off. It's very, very easy to do. Okay. And that is there, I believe, the second best meat on the deer. The number one best meat is they people call this the tenderloin. These are actually the back loins. The tenderloin is the one that's on the inside. And the tenderloin, by the way, is attached right outside the thoracic cavity by the liver. Okay, we'll take this here. We'll cut that. I don't want to get any more fur on that, and I have to. Okay, now there's the back loin. Now that's exposing here. This is exposing the ribs where they attach to the backbone. Now, a few things to note. The lungs, as we proceed with this and we blow them up, they fill up the whole rib cage. The thoracic cavity, which is again from the diaphragm forward in here, is in a negative air pressure. I've had a very hard time understanding that, and I think I finally grasped it. But what it is, it's like a vacuum chamber that the lungs are in. And the vacuum is actually between the outside of the lung and the inside of the rib cage. There's a membrane there. And when the deer breathes, the air from the outside, that vacuum, that pulls the air in. When that cavity is broken by an arrow going through there and air is brought into that cavity, that negative air pressure is broken and that lungs will collapse. Uh, and so that's why it's important for you to be able to see these rib cage because theoretically, any shot that is inside this rib cage that allows air to get into the thoracic cavity will collapse the lung. Okay, so we will get into that later, but what happens, well, there's a membrane that separates the two lungs, which is called the mediastinum. In one lung, if you, if you penetrate with one arrow only partial way in, that can collapse the one lung, but not necessarily the other one, and the deer can live. And I shot probably the second or third largest buck with my bow I ever shot, and he was very close to my tree at a steep angle, and I only hit one lung, followed his blood trail, there was rain, couldn't find him. A month later during gun season, I shot him and I got him. And he was hit right through one lung. So, okay, now what we're going to do next is we're going to start taking the meat off the rib cage. I've got to spin around over here. 
I'm doing everything a little backwards. I'm going to show you how we're going to do this. I'm going to bring that down. And this is going to start revealing the lungs. Okay? And this is going to show the lungs. See how the lungs go up. Do you see up there underneath that backbone how? I'm not going to go down too far because the meat actually holds all this together. And I've done this with deer. We've been doing this for, I don't know, 30 years. Doing all our own research. Now I have to be careful I don't hit the diaphragm. You see it bouncing in there? See the diaphragm attaches here, so you would assume it goes straight across, but it pushes in. It's concave convex, which is why, as you'll see on my anatomy, lungs, a rear lung shot comes is only an eighth of an inch thick. So a rear lung shot does not have near the blood loss that a lung shot that is forward. And again, I'm trying to go as fast as I can so I don't bore you. Because I'm told I'm long-winded and I talk too much. Because I feel everybody should want to know this information. But many people nowadays, because of computers, video games, they, oop, there I touch the diaphragm. See that? I committed a no-no. I'm a bad boy, and my mom's going to send me to my room. But I'll tell her I'm doing the best I can, Mom. Oh, I did it again. See how close that diaphragm, even though it's attached to the last rib, it sticks real close to it. It doesn't go straight across at all. Okay, and I'm going to leave the meat... Okay, on the very last rib here, because it really is, well, yeah, this actually is the last one, okay? I'm going to go there, now I guess we've got to go forward here. And while I'm doing this, if you pay attention, you can see the ribs in the back are much smaller than the ribs in the front. And you'll see how the top ones angle backwards, where these start coming this way. Another thing to note, these ribs are actually jointed. They're jointed at the top, they're jointed right here, and then they go down forward and they attach to the sternum. In fact, I'll actually take one. I don't like cutting too much tissue away in the bottom because these they're all held together by tissue. They can come apart. But I'll take one of these here apart to kind of help you see how they come down and they start angling forward here. Now, the heart sits to the back of the sixth rib, so it's hard to cart count from the front back, so I go from the back forward. So this is 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. So here's the sixth rib, and look what we find. There is the heart right there. You'd almost think I did this before, huh? But that's where the back of the heart is, is in line with the, the sixth rib. And i got to watch I don't puncture the lungs because we're going to reinflate the lungs. The lungs are deflated now because, remember, they're in a negative pressure cavity. The outside air then gets sucked into there and they inflate. As soon as the deer dies and, and air is brought into that cavity and breaks what I would call the seal, they deflate. Which is why when you ever see a deer, the lungs are always deflated. Okay? Hopefully I'm talking about something here. That's not going to bore you. If you're watching this, you might as well maybe listen to me talk as opposed to nothing. Now, unfortunately, when we do this, we generally clean the lungs of all the blood here. But this particular deer has a situation with him that we do not want to clean the blood out of him. Now, as you can see, this humerus bone is going to be covering up and the scapula. See, we're starting to cover up here. As this leg goes back, we're covering up some of the lungs. Okay? And that's probably as far forward as I think I can go. Okay? So again, the deer has 13 ribs. And what we're seeing here is 
13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. There's one more that's in the front. These lungs, I want you to see how big they are here. And this whole rib cage gets smaller. So when you shoot in the front of a deer, the problem you have is, yes, you have the heart. Yes, you have a lot of major blood vessels here. But you've got a small target where if you shoot low, you can hit the elbow. High, you can hit the shoulder blade. You really don't have much. Take a look at my fingers of a shot. If we shoot back farther in here, we have a bigger target. Now you would say, well, why don't you shoot way back here? That's your biggest target. The problem is these lungs are very thin in the back, and we don't want to hit in these last ribs here. I shot a deer two years ago where I hit the third rib on one side here, came out over here, and he went a long ways because the rib lungs are not that thick there as far as blood loss goes. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to actually inflate the lungs. But before I do it, I'm going to separate and try to show you the heart, okay? I want you to see the angle the heart sits. I figure the heart sets at a 70 degree angle like this from the bottom. This would be 90. This is kicked over about 20 degrees. And I know video, it's very hard to see. And I don't want to damage the lungs. But the tip of the heart is right back here. It's going all the way up into here. And I want you to see to the backbone here, there is not a great a distance, a great deal of distance between the top of the heart and the backbone. So if you shoot close to these legs, these people that shoot forward into this triangle here, it's a deadly triangle if you get your arrow up in here. I'm not going to kid you, deny that. But you're shooting a smaller target. If you pull back a little bit here, you, you have a much larger target. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get turn the compressor on and we're going to inflate these lungs up and you're going to be amazed. Type movie, is it? I live in the blood sets of deer for so many years studying these things that it's quite normal. For me. Now, here's what I want you to do is I'm going to inflate these lungs and I want you to see how small they are def now deflated, but I want you to see a few things. This whole cavity here, those lungs are going to inflate. Now, there's many people believe, in fact, most people, that below the backbone, that there's a dead space below the backbone that you can put an arrow in where you're above the lungs and below the backbone. That is a fallacy. That is not true. In fact, my statement I'm going to make before I blow these up would have, and I didn't tell many people this because people get mad at me. It's like talking religion and politics. It's so controversial. But the lungs go above the backbone. Now remember, most people, my daughter who's doing the video cameras, give me a look like, what? Most people believe there's a gap that you can put an arrow in above the lungs and below the backbone. And so when I'm saying the lungs actually go above the backbone, those are fighting words. But let me show you before I inflate them what's going to happen. Right here, that's the backbone. Right, maybe you can see it better right there. That's the backbone. The ribs are attached to the backbone and they actually are heart-shaped, and they actually come up. From a cross-section view, they actually come up. So they're shaped like this. If you show my bloody hands, if you can handle this, instead of being flat like this, the ribs come up like this. They come up above the backbone, so the lungs on each side actually have the top of them are above the backbone. And what happens is, <clears throat> they are aorta artery, the big one, that, the big artery that comes out of the heart, comes up and attaches to the backbone. If I take his lungs out here, I can cut the ribs, I can show you that. But when that comes up and out of there, that actually sticks along the bottom of the backbone. The lungs are above it. And I first found this out when a guy told me that I was wrong. And he was the, his name was Terry Amundsen. He's a Wisconsin wildlife disease specialist. And he told me the lungs go above the backbone. And I knew he was wrong like every other hunter because we think we know it all when we don't. Well, I shot a deer once in a tree and my arrow went in 
above the backbone, it hit the lung going in. As it descended, it hit the artery across the backbone. Well, how can it hit the artery across the backbone if the lungs are below the backbone? So I found out he was right, and since then, I've shot one other deer like that. So I've shot two, and my son shot one a year ago where he hit above the backbone, hit the one lung on the entrance side, took the artery off in the bottom, and then hit, came out the other lung on the other side. So we're going to inflate this now, and you're going to see that this lung is going to fill all this up here. And it's not because I'm overly inflating this. You'll find any medical professional <clears throat> that studies the thorax cavity, they will tell you that the whole thorax cavity is 100% filled up with lungs. And the difference as far as the lungs expanding has to do with the whole rib cage and the diaphragm moving. Just like when you're running, you breathe... <sighs> You, you breathe in air, but that cavity never has any void spot. There's no way with a, with a negative air pressure or vacuum in there, there's no room for any air pressure. And then if the lung's inflated, now you'd have a positive air pressure. Where would that air go? So here we go. I'm going to inflate this. I'm going to find this trachea down here because we cut the neck off shorter than I normally do. Okay, are you ready? See how the ribs are starting to expand? See that? Now I'm getting a lot of blow by here because my hole in my lungs is allowing air to come back. I'm getting a lot of air coming backwards here. I cut that too short. There we go. That'll be better. There, do you see that? Now, let's take a look at a number of things. You see the sides in the back where it's detached that the lungs go all the way to the top. They don't in the top just because the animal it has been cut open, but they do in their life. I want you to see where the heart is here, the sixth rib. The lungs totally envelop and cover over the heart, which means if you hit a heart shot, you're also making a lung shot. And you see I'm pulsating the air to be able to simulate the way that it would be. So I'm going to let it go all the way down. Isn't that amazing? Look what a great thing that God has done. Just look at that. Isn't that amazing? Now right here is the heart. Right there. You see where the backbone is? See the diaphragm on the inside and the back? Now what I'd like you to do is see a little bit of the diaphragm in the back. If how that if that fills out there a little bit. You can see that. I gotta get a hold of I've got too big a hole in his uh, trachea. There we go. And what I have found is that this lung, when we set it right, it goes back to this 12th rib is where it inflates to. You can see what happens is I've got too big a hole in this trachea here, and the air is blowing back by it. There we go. And I'm going to try to hold it as good as I can. But I want you to see how the back part of this, see how the diaphragm comes back out, but the lung does not go straight across. See how it's concave in there? Okay. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to snip the ribs, these here, so we can blow the lungs up and you can see them without the ribs and then we can get a better view of them. Okay? Okay, I gotta go get a pair of tin snips.
right there is where it's actually, see that? It's actually a joint there, I had a joint. Now, when I blow the lungs up now, this is gonna show a little bit more clear. We just take Kurt this down one step at a time. This is gonna show a little more clear, the heart. Now I can take this back. I can show you the heart actually sitting in here. I want you to see where the ocrine is here in relationship to the heart. Even though the heart goes all the way to the bottom of the cavity here, I want you to be able to see it still does not cover that up like most people think. Okay, the other thing I want you to see here is the diaphragm goes like this here, okay? Do you see my hand pushing on the diaphragm here? Do you know what, on the, when the animal is alive, do you know what's pushing on the diaphragm right there? Just about three fingers from the back of the heart? That's his stomach. Because I commonly ask people, what sticks forward farther on the deer, the liver or the stomach? Everybody will say, well, of course the liver is farthest forward because you go heart, lungs, liver, stomach. That's not true. On the bottom part, if you see where this diaphragm is, that stomach comes all the way here. And the liver sits, behind, the stomach sits behind the liver, that's true, but at the bottom of the liver, the stomach actually is in front of it and sticks farther forward than the liver does itself. Now, any farm animal vet will tell you that cows get a disease that's caused from them eating barbed wire, and the barbed wire in their stomach actually excuse me, can go through and actually cut the heart. And that's because at the very bottom of the heart, the stomach is that close to it. And the reason I'm bringing that up here, I'm gonna start bringing this home to you as an archer. You'll see how these ribs move as the diaphragm goes. If you shoot for this heart, you don't have to shoot very far down at all and you're missing the deer, very far forward and you're hitting the humerus bone, very far back and you're ending up hitting the stomach even though you're very close. So as you can see, just the size of this cavity, it would stand to reason if we're trying to shoot at the largest target possible, which is what my research is all based upon center kill technology, it's actually, you can see, is gonna be about right here. Well, guess where that is? That's right behind the heart. And when you go check all my anatomy out, we've spent much, much time with bloody deer like this, many of these studying each aspect individually to be able to learn exactly what goes on. This again will show you here, here's the backbone. Here's the artery right here that is attached to the bottom of the backbone. You see it's in the bottom of the backbone and on the right side. Okay, on the other side, it's actually on the left side. And I want you to see, see how this is dipped right in here? This is actually the heart shape of the rib coming from the backbone going up and those lungs fill all that up, all the way in there. Another thing I want you to see is, do you see in the front here how the lungs are smaller they're tapered as they come forward. They're not even. So again, if you shoot back farther, you have a bigger target that's back here farther. In fact, your biggest target would be all the way back here, but since the lungs are concave convex, it doesn't take much you go back there and you may hit one lung and end up hitting the stomach. So we've spent a great deal of time studying this and finding where is the perfect spot. And then after we found the perfect spot, which is here, which you can see where my finger is that looks like in the center, that's the center horizontally. The center vertically, halfway between the bottom of the backbone and where the heart lays there, that distance there is generally about eight inches, eight and a half inches. So you come up four and a quarter inches, boom, right there's the height wise, the vertical middle, the distance here in the back, the horizontal middle fits us right there. And then center kill technology has this. So we actually go through, so we're hitting the animal in the perfect shot no matter where we go through right here between the lungs. And I want you to see this membrane, you see this membrane that's right here? Look at the major artery coming out of the heart. Look at how that's full of blood coming up right there. Look how that goes. Oh, you can imagine when you hit that going right up over the, over the trachea and the esophagus right here. See that right there? Just amazes me when I study this. But uh, going back to center kill technology, this membrane here, this is called the mediastinum. And what that does, it separates the lung cavity on the right side here from the lung cavity on the left side. But if you put an arrow through here on this side and hit this lung, you break the mediastinum where you go into the other lung, then the air from the outside can get in there and collapse both lungs. Obviously, if you go through and have total penetration and you have a hole out the other side, you have air coming in from both sides and I think you have a better chance of lung collapse. Uh, Mr. Randy Elmer, who's probably by far the most renowned archer and hunter in the world 
told me when he hunts elk, uh, that the tricep muscle, this big one that sits right here, is so big on an elk that he believes you could put an arrow through there the way the muscle constricts, it can feet go around the arrow and actually stop air penetration into the lung cavity and the, the elk can live because of that. I find that very hard to believe with the hole through the lungs why the air from the outside where they're breathing wouldn't get in through that cavity. But he obviously knows way more than I do. So, But anyway, this mediastinum, this membrane that's here that separates the cavity, right in that, right here, Right there, that would be our center kill technology. No matter where we shoot our arrows from, high, back, broadside, they all go through there and you will hit both lungs. And that's come my whole theory is based on shooting in the biggest, take the biggest part of the target, the vital organ group, finding the dead center horizontally, vertically, and laterally or right directly below the backbone, that's the spot to shoot. So we're going to reinflate the lungs and now you're going to be able to see what you saw before but you're going to see it without the ribs getting in the way. Okay. There, you can see how they pop up there. See that? Now if you can get from behind there, Doris, and show the concave, convex, how they're shaped. the membrane on the outside of the lung that gets sucked in. And now right here is the flap. I'll see as it goes down, there's where the heart is. Boom. See it there, how that sits there? Okay. Now, I'm going to try to... See, I can't hold it here tight and control this in the back to be able to show you the diaphragm the way, the way I want it. And I get, don't have enough trachea. i got to hold that real tight. I want you to see the shape of the lung in the back. When that's put back into position, and I can't move my hand to do it, this actually sits up there like this. This lung actually sits up here like this, and it comes from the 12th rib. This is my research, and we've done a lot of these. It comes back to the 12th rib, and it comes straight down and around. You will notice almost all drawings that they have of lungs, they show the lungs being shaped like this, and they push the arrow shot too far forward. So... Okay, well, I can take, the next thing that I could do if I want is I could take the shoulder blade off, show you where the front rib is and how much room there is there, but then that kind of seals the deal on this here. And as you can see, Jeanette, there's nothing wrong with his lungs, there's nothing wrong with his liver. So whatever happened with him, with his bleeding was not that way, and they have the rear end of that, so they shouldn't. I don't understand why that is. So I'm just trying to debate whether I take this off and show the first rib. We probably should because we'll get many more deer. So I have to find my knife. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to take the shoulder blade off. I'm going to bring this all the way forward to the first rib. And then we're going to blow the lung up so you can see how little room that you actually have to put your broadhead in between the front shoulder here and a front unshot. So here we go. blood vessel coming through. Right here is the bronchiocephalic trunk, which is four major blood vessels that come forward here. There's one of them coming out. Okay, we're going to try to come down. Gonna try to hit all the back one here so we can expose that there. There you can see, see the major blood vessels right here in the front? That's where if you can hit those, they are 
absolutely deadly. Okay, we'll move that over there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rat meat again off the second rib and the first rib. And now we're going to blow the lung up. Okay, now right here. Here's what I want to show you. If you're videotaping this, there's meat on the other side, but do you see between the first rib here and on the other side, here's the backbone coming down here. Here's the top of the rib. I want to show that whole rib because that rib was very important in my sculpture because it's a reference point to show exactly where everything is at in the front. Okay. I have too much meat on that rib. It doesn't look too professional, does it? Okay. Now you can see, see the major blood vessels coming from the heart forward here? That's the bronchiocephalic trunk that goes through right here and from there, everything comes forward, it goes to the head and neck, and it swings back to the legs. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow the lungs back up so you can see the lungs, how they're shaped forward all the way to the back. And again, this is not in a negative air pressure cavity that's going to fill that all the way up along that back and I'm getting a lot of air escaping but I want you to notice in the front do you see how much smaller the lungs are in the front of the deer than they are in the back like I'm going to turn the air pressure off because I'm getting too much air going by yeah I got a lot more I know oh boy I know what's happening the compressor's not on it's going to take a minute for that to kick on and run Doris okay it's going to make some noise I right, pull my gloves off for that new pair of gloves. Now, we'll see what they edit on all this, you know what I mean? But there's information here, Jeanette, and I want to get Travis in to show them the color of those lungs compared to what he has here. So you can see, you know what I mean? We're not even close. See that behind you? You're recording? What doesn't matter? You're going to cut it out. Huh? You can go to standby, sure. I have to wait for the compressor to kick. Okay. Are you guys recording? Mm -hmm. Okay, what I want you to note is, I'm going to take this lung back. Now, as you can see, believe it or not, the lung... <sighs> The lung on a deer, they do not have just a right and a left lung. This whole lung is actually, on this side, is on the right side and the left side. It's all one lung here in the front. There's not a separate one. It's kind of interesting how that's done. Uh, I'm going to pull this back, and I'm going to show you. Look at the blood vessel. Look at the blood vessel that comes up out of here. Look at the size of these. See how this comes right up here out of the heart? comes up right over the trachea, bifurcates going up and then along the back, the inside. This is where you could hit them along the backbone, hit one of these, boom, and you get lucky and yet the deer dies. Another time you miss it and you don't hit it and the deer doesn't die and you don't find it. So, but see how big they are. And this splits four ways and this is the bronchiocephalic trunk. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to blow the lungs up again, which you've seen numerous times, but it's going to help show you from the first rib all the way to the 13th rib, the size of the lungs. And again, you see this gap that's in here? That's not normal. That's not correct. It would be when the animal is alive, there's no gap. That would fill itself right up in here. So here we go. Oh, and I want to show you right here. This here is the, the, a deer has seven cervical vertebrae, which just means it has seven uh, neck vertebrae. And this is the sixth one here, and this is a keel. It's in the trachea and the esophagus, which sits right above this on the back side here. That sits right underneath inside this keel right here. And you'll see a lot of the artist drawings have the backbone up farther.
they bring it up way up here, so they have to separate this keel if they do the backbone correctly with the right amount of vertebrae, and they separate the esophagus from it, but it actually sits here. The other thing I want you to note before I blow the lungs up is, do you see the space that if you take a look at the fur here, take a look at the distance from the fur down to where the lungs is. Okay, do you see where the lung is there from the tip of my knife all the way to the fur? That's the distance down from the fur on the back. Okay, and that's right above the heart. So people see the fur, they figure that's the top of the deer, they shoot, and they shoot right through here. They go right through this section, right in here, and they assume that that's the dead spot in a deer. Another misconception of there being a dead spot and why people think it is, when you shoot a deer and the deer runs away with the arrow sticking out, you're almost always in a tree and your arrow is sticking out with the trajectory with your feathers being up higher. So when you shoot and you see your feathers of deer run away, they're always going to look higher than they are on the entrance point. Okay? Now we're going to blow these lungs up here. And now we'll show you, because again, my point here is there's so little distance between the first rib here, the first rib on both sides, that if you were to take a shot to get it in here, you have this keel that's in your way. You've got the lungs are small here. You have just a tiny little circle to get in here. Now, if you have the humerus bone, you come in from the side, you have a little bit more, well, you have quite a bit more room from the side of the shoulder coming in at an angle to hit both lungs. But that front-on shot, it's very difficult. Yes, you can see all the blood vessels. If you do get it in there, the deer is going to die very quickly. But it's so small, and it'd be so easy for you to hit this rib here or stay on the outside of the rib cage. So here we go. See how the heart's totally covered up? The different lobes of the lung. See again how much bigger the lung is in the back than it is in the front. So again, shooting for the largest area, shooting back farther than most people do gives you the larger target. The lungs actually go back quite far if you take a look up high. You actually have a bigger shot up high than you do down low. I want you to notice the curve of the lungs from the top coming down. I'm going to do, Jeanette, I'm going to have you, if you could put your camera down, I'm going to have you try to take this lung here put you, and try to pull it right up in here. 